It's Daniel versus Dries. Now, this is quite interesting for a few reasons. Daniel and Dries have played on my stream in the past, and Daniel swept Dries. Secondly, they're both, I think, the two best NA 1v1 players who are too young to compete in Smug and also in RLCSX, although that's the Threes event. You know, you need to be 15 to compete in Psionic sponsored events. Um, but these guys are both 14. Okay, well, that's about as good of a server as, you, as you're going to get for these guys. Pretty nice. 50 odd ping each. So let's get into it. Daniel versus Drees. Who you guys got taking this? Uh, type D in chat if you think Drees is going to win. Type D in chat if you think Daniel's going to win. Let's see how many people are going to make bold predictions here. Um, I guess you could go for uppercase D for Daniel and lowercase D for Drees because Drees does not capitalize uh, the D at the start of his name. Don't know why so many pro players do this. They go for the full lowercase name. You know, Ixo does that. Um, there's there's a lot of players who do this actually. It's, it's quite strange. You know, just capitalize that first uh, first letter, you know? I can't Drees get the turnaround goal here. Oh, that's very well done. So Daniel had a big kickoff pressure to start off this one. And then Drees responded with a really big kickoff pressure play of his own. But some finesse for the finish there. Beautiful shot. Same as Rock a thousand bits. He's uh, cheering for Drees in this matchup. Well, good news for you. I think Drees is getting a second goal here. Trips up Daniel on the landing. And indeed, he is up by one. Free kid. Thanks to the brand new tier one. Welcome to the channel. Drees is looking for revenge here in the show match world. Daniel did beat Drees 3 0, actually. Um, about half a year ago, they matched up on my stream for the first time. Um, but since then, Drees has beaten Daniel in competition. I believe he beat him in the Fear 500 group stage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then Drees, of course, went on to win the, the Fear 500, so... He had a great tournament there. Was it the group stage that he beat him in, or was it the bracket? I forget. Nice shot by Daniel. That's a good punish on Drees overextending into the far corner. This is going to be a good series. It's going to be a really close one. Yeah, Drees, Drees was able to beat a lot of NA's best uh, recently in uh, the Fear 500. You guys should check that out if you like NA 1v1. Um, what, what's... is it... Is it just called... The channel is just called Fear, isn't it? I always forget. I'm so bad with names. But what is the channel... What is the YouTube channel called where people can check out that high level ones competition for NA? Is it just called Fear RL? It is called Fear RL. Yeah, F W E R. Uploads super high level matches in NA. Show matches, tournament matches. Dries giving Daniel a nice one in chat here. I wonder how serious he is about that. Because, I mean, it is a good finish, but do you reckon that's Dries just uh, trying to slyly point out the fact that Daniel's won quite a few kickoffs there? <laughs> and he's scoring a lot of goals as a result. Could be either one. And Dries uh, and Daniel are both, like I said before, they're both 14 right now. So. Competitive experience is inevitably lacking, although they are going to only get better with time when it comes to that. But Daniel is just crushing it right now. Dries not having a good time with uh, most of the kickoffs, but there's also been a couple of goals where Dries has overextended into Daniel's offensive corner. So I don't know about that. He's got to be a bit more careful. Daniel knows how to power shot. He knows how to clear the ball. That's a great save by Dries. And will he be able to get the wave dash shot? He will. Sinks it in confidently. Both players pretty happy to attack each other. Um, even if they are going extremely all in for these shots. Yeah, I reckon when I was uh, trying to glance at the Twitch chat predictions here, most of them were in the, in the favor of Daniel. I'm going to have to agree, honestly. You know, Dries did, of course, like I said, beat Daniel in their most recent competitive matchup. But he's still going to remember that uh, show match that these two played. That's a great save by Drees. Bit unfortunate for him that he didn't land um, on the post. But he's transitioned beautifully. Daniel with an unreal save as well. Had to scramble back with hardly any boost. Great stuff here. By NA's two best 1v1 prospects. Daniel's going to have to wait until the very end of this year before he gets his shot at official Rocket League competition. Drees. Might be able to catch the tail end of uh, RLCS Season X if a team picks him up or if he, you know, starts one of his own. Uh, you never know. Maybe we'll get another smug season in the future if we did. Or if we do, I definitely expect to see Dries featuring in them. He's one to watch in the very, very near future. 
Relentless pressure by Drees. Lovely pre-flip to just keep the momentum going. Daniel's tripped on the post, and now he's not going to recover the second time. So Daniel actually had this. Drees didn't want to flip into it because it's too risky. And Daniel actually tripped on the goalpost as he was entering his net, so didn't get the clear ball before it bounced up over uh, the top of him again. Lovely fake kickoff by Daniel. Totally convinced Drees that he was hitting this one normally. And Drees fakes a challenge, and he's not done too well with it. Takes himself out of the game, and Daniel sends another one over to his head. So I'm sorry, Drees, we have to take another look at this. Yeah, he just he messed up his recovery on that. He's supposed to land with a bit of momentum um, going back towards his goal there. But he, he got the air roll wrong, landed a bit side on, lost some momentum. Hey, no problem. Thanks to the 29-month-year one, and also Breca with 37-month-year one. Welcome back to you as well. Daniel happy to defend at the tail end of uh, game number one here. Dries has overextended a couple of times this game, so I don't blame Daniel for playing this uh, defensive style at the moment. However, all of Dries' overextensions have come earlier in the game. He's, he's cleaned up his act, and that is a lovely challenge. Look at this break check by Dries. Daniel thought that Dries was going to try and turn into this, but Dries just drives back away from it. Clean interception. And now he's back within one goal. It's looking good for Dries. I think now is the time that Daniel needs to step up the aggression because Dries, like I said, he overextended it a couple of times early in the game, but not for the past couple of minutes. He's been a much more disciplined version of himself here, realizing that Daniel's trying to bait him in. Now Daniel on the wrong side of this ball to shadow easily. He will get the save, but he's landed badly, and Dries punishes him. Sending the shot over to his head. Now, when I say Daniel's on the wrong side of the ball to shadow here, what I mean is that he crossed him, he kind of crossed himself over. He volunteered to go to the far side of the box there, which makes it very, very difficult for him to get a natural save, or a natural clear, I should say, on the ball while saving it. So it's a bit interesting to see Daniel do that to himself. Most players will try to tuck themselves in at the near post side if they're going to shadow a flick like that. I mean, you, you see why. Very, very hard to clear the ball. If you have to dodge back across it, Drees, no flip shot. Daniel still defending pretty well at the end of this one. But he's had to defend extremely well. Drees is just piling on the pressure. He's going for a volume of shots now that he's got the tie game. Fake challenge by Drees. Daniel's not buying it. Collects the ball in midfield, but he has to give up possession as a result of his dwindling boost total. Now Drees, perfect timing on the flick. And he is back in the lead. Ideal from Dries. He had everything he needed here. Got the boost advantage. Got ball control. Could see where Daniel was. And as soon as Daniel went for the challenge, Dries flicks it over. Him. And it wasn't a slow flick either. He really did uh, go for that. Nice save by Dries. Clearing the ball to the corner. He's boost starved Daniel by doing this. And he can just play for more 100 boost pads here and let the clock do the work for him. Dries. Bringing the ball back to his own half. Fakes a long shot. Daniel has to challenge here, and he does. Drees should have seen this coming. He almost got scored on. As Daniel is forced to rush in, in the closing seconds of the game. Daniel's still gonna get one more chance here. Drees is totally out of boost. Has to back off to mid. Here comes Daniel. Fake challenge from Drees. Doesn't get a lot of distance on the first touch. Oh no, Drees. I mean, he got what he wanted here. He baited the flick, but he just did it. Knock the ball into the corner. He didn't knock it into the ground. <laughs> and Daniel, of course, he scores the second time. Therese, like I said, he, he just didn't execute. He got what he wanted. And now he's going to lose game one unless he can get back. Oh, he is going to get back. Daniel shot not the fastest. Now Daniel's got to run back to his goal. Is Therese going to go for this? He's not going to dive at it, but Daniel's got the demo. And that's going to be game. Power shot from Daniel. Therese has totally thrown game one. What a disaster. He had it. The fake challenge. Baited the flick in regulation time. No time left in regulation. But Dries just didn't get any distance on his interception. If he knocked that ball into the corner, he probably wins the game. I think Daniel might be able to keep it up, but Dries probably wins. Even if Dries just like gets above the ball there and knocks it straight down. I mean, obviously he wins in that case. Daniel can't get underneath the ball at that range. But somehow he has lost this one. And, you know, when you add that, when you combine that, 
uh, loss with the fact that Daniel did beat Dries in a sweep the last time they played on my channel. Yeah, I reckon Daniel's got this. It's going to be tough, right? They've messed up the kickoff spawns here. There we go. They did it. So they just had to keep leaving and joining until they ended up on opposite sides of the ball. Well played to them. What do you guys think? Can we get a pre Okay, we, we've got a prediction here. Uh, does the winner of game two score more than eight goals? Interesting. I like that one. That is a great prediction contest. Now, Daniel almost faked that Dries there. Harsh cut in field. Oh dear, what's happening to Daniel on that play though? Dries has time to take a first touch. I think he might have overhit this though. He's going to go for it, but he does not hit that very well. Dries has got to calm down here. Multiple poor touches, and now Daniel with a heroic save. Just to remind him that it's not all going to be easy for Dries. Not going to be Dreesy, I should say. Yeah, Dries has just got to remember he's made big comeback wins in recent. Um, one beyond matches. Daniel swept him last time they played on my channel, but not last time they played in competition. Dries beat him, and he went on to win the tournament they were playing in. So, if anything, Dries is the more informed player competitively, but uh, show match kind of setting has proven time and time again to be a different kind of vibe to uh, 1v1 tournaments. Half star, thanks for 29 month tier one. Same as Rock, thanks for 1,000 bits again. Uh, he's cheering all for Dries here. Sorry about the end of that game. I'm sure you must have been pretty happy going right up until zero seconds. Oh, well done with the shot from Daniel. He chases Dries away from the corner boost as well. If you're wondering why Dries didn't just go for the corner boost there, it's because if he did, he wouldn't have a car. Uh, Daniel would have demoed it. Daniel is really just cleaning up right now. 2-0. Lovely touch in this corner. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, he just barely got the ball past Dries. And he managed to get his car passed unscathed as well. Swagnetti, thanks for the brand new prime. Welcome to the channel. Dries going to get his first goal again too. And that was much needed. He really just needs to start keeping ball control again. Because when he got control of the ball in that first game, and he just started to pepper shots at Daniel's net, Dries looked like he had an edge in the matchup. But... Um, he just didn't clutch it out. He choked the end of the game. And now we're back into Daniel. Full control. Lovely flick by Daniel. Puts the reset shot behind Dries, who expected a far post flick. And I think that, yeah, Daniel's even double touched that one in as well. Element of a dunk on it. Also, it's all going Daniel's way right now. 3 1. Still yet to lose a game to Dries on my channel. I mean, you can tell just by watching these guys play. They're they're absolutely at that level already in terms of mechanical ability. Um, even in terms of consistency. The only thing that they lack is, of course, that competitive experience. But they're, they're absolutely right there with the best in North America, these two. Extremely high-level stuff right here. That was a really good save attempt. We have to see this again from Daniel's POV. Oh, that was a really good try. Dries did brilliantly to cover uh, the entire ball as well as he did. And now he's starting to read Daniel's fake kickoff. This isn't one of Daniel's better fake kickoffs, so I must say. Yeah, he flipped way too early there. See, when you see your opponent dodge as early as Daniel did in that play, um, you already know they're not going to go for the ball. See, if you're going to dodge like this, you won't reach the ball in time. Yeah, Dries knew something was up. Daniel's done that a few times today, and he, he could read the timing of it being off. And now he's up 4-3. Three. Dries just knew that he had the boost advantage, makes it work. 4-3 now, so he's still, you know, had control in both games. Is he going to get anything from them? Pre-flip attempted by Dries. He's going to dance around Daniel. This is just ridiculous. Ball control by Dries. 5-3 now. Daniel did not expect that one. Just when you think Dries is going to go to midfield for a boost advantage. Nope. He cuts back and goes for straight for your goal. It's a great little streak here for Dries. Can he make it 6? Yes, he will. Daniel needs a kickoff transplant. It's not going well for him. Every single kickoff is going heavily in the favor of Dries. Does Daniel have maybe a wave dash recovery kickoff under his uh, or in his back pocket somewhere? Doesn't look like it. I don't see many of those in uh, NA. Got to say, apparently Jack's doing his best to popularize them on the EU server. 
I really do think it's one of the most unexplored kickoff strategies at the very highest level of ones. Lovely recovery by Dries. Stays safe from the demo. And uh, keeps out ball pressure, but he's conceded the possession. Now Daniel looks for the demo, gets it, but he's hit the ball into the bar. Well, getting one last touch on it. Still, strong position for Daniel. Pretty good save by Dries, though. He's trying to just lunge forward. And I think he's fooled Daniel here. I don't know if that was fully intended by Dries to just fly past the ball. Um, and also miss a demo entirely, but it worked pretty well because there's no way Daniel saw that coming. Perfect timing on the challenge by Dries. No wave dash for Daniel to accelerate the ball on target. And you know, Dries is right back to his full, fully confident self. He started off this game with a couple of wayward touches, but this is more like it from him. Now Daniel's sick of defending in his net. He uh, decides to up the aggression and challenge first time in the midfield. That's really good adaptation by Daniel. He's been backing off a bit too much, I would say. He's been retreating too often, giving Dries too much space to work with. Daniel fakes the challenge with the wave dash, plays for the boost instead. Bit of a scary situation though for him. Therese didn't get a ton of power on the shot. It could have been dangerous. Daniel air dribbles into the ceiling. One last touch to try and go around Therese as the ball was about to land. Therese does not allow it. A lot of heavy shots being attempted here by Therese, but he's mishitting them. Uh, that's two in a row now that he's just slightly mishit. A lot of power missing from these shots. I believe he's dodging just a tiny bit too late, but I could be wrong. I, you know, I might not be seeing exactly what's happening here uh, because we are spectating from EU. Lovely recovery by Daniel. He's within a goal. Therese needs to be up uh, careful to the utmost right now. I know Daniel's figured out the kickoff. And that's a very good shot. It's just in. Daniel ties it. Is it another nightmare scenario for Therese? It was a zero second equalizer in the last game. He's got 48 seconds to work with this time. Now, if Dries loses this game, I really just don't see a comeback happening. It's going to be too much for him. I don't think he's confident in the matchup in a show match setting. Overall, he's had, you know, spurts in this uh, series where he's looked great. And he's also fallen apart on occasion. Now, why is of Dries not to go for this? Daniel was right behind that. But look at Daniel's boost efficiency. He's still going, still air dribbling. And now, that's just I say that, he has run out of boost. Gives up the possession to Dries. Thinks about the immediate wall shot. A bit scared to do it. With such little time left in the clock. Now here comes Dries for the demo. Just misses it. Dangerous play by Daniel in the back corner. You can see those heavy hits. So keeping Dries under pressure. Daniel into the air with hardly any time left in the game. He's got the reset. Dries blocks the shot. And he doesn't bother keeping the ball up on zero. He's still got... Probably flashbacks of keeping the ball up in zero seconds in the last game, or Daniel doing it, I should say. Oh dear, though, Dries in a horrible position. Daniel's done him again. And for the second game in a row, Daniel takes down Dries immediately in overtime. Solid adaptation by Daniel. He was getting crushed in kickoffs in this game. I think Dries went from 3-1 down to 6-3 uh, ahead. But like literally five goals in a row. And then Daniel managed to turn that around. Put four in a row past Dries. So he's just been the more clutch player here. There really isn't a lot between them. In fact, I'd say they're pretty much inseparable when it comes to skill right now. Uh, but the only identifiable difference is that Daniel has been clutch. Dries has not. He has, you know, Dries choked his zero second play. Daniels nailed every single one of his. Same as Rock, you Fairweather fan, cheering a thousand bits for Daniel now. How could you? Hey, Fair J, thanks for 49 month year one. How are the, uh, how's the interview edit going? Hog Morbis, thanks for the seven month prime, and also X Static, thanks for the two month year one. Michael D. Noise, thanks for the brand new prime, and also X Static, thanks for gifting three subs. Welcome to all the new subs. And uh, I, Russ DRL, thanks for the uh, brand new tier one. Welcome to the channel, mate. I reckon we're looking at another another sweep here, guys. As much as I'd love to see a close series today, Daniel's just too clutch. I don't know what it is. Dries just can't play a consistent endgame against him. It's the heavy hits really piling on the pressure early on again. 
There is a wave dash kickoff. Beautiful. Technique there by Daniel. Just uh, getting to the ball a little bit faster. I don't, I'd love to see more of this from from uh, NA ones. You know, it's such a good mix up, especially if you're losing kickoffs. Yes, true, Fair Jim. True. Fair Jim currently editing the Arsenal uh, interview. For those of you who are wondering. Would you ever consider bringing TikTok creators into show matches? Are there any like TikTok creators who are like bigger than, or who are big on TikTok but nothing else? Any like high level players who are only big on TikTok? I'm not aware of any actually. Perfect challenge by Daniel. Straight behind the ball. And Dries. Not having an easy time setting up multiple shots in a row here just like he did before. Or like he did it mainly in that game one comeback, he was really starting to, um, to control the possession for long periods of time. But Daniel's mixed up his challenge game. Um, he's you know mixed up the kickoff game very well. Overall, he's just made the necessary adaptations to take control away from Drees, and that's just too good. Daniel three nil, and you don't save those. Drees. Did a little bit of freestyle setup for the defense, but with no ball pressure, you're not going to save that kind of flip reset quality from Daniel. I mean, you need a wild pre-jump to save this. And the last time that Drees got ahead of himself in his own net trying to save a reset shot, Daniel doubled it off the near post. This is a lot better from Drees, but he's still been outplayed. This is honestly the best strat that Drees can go for here. He needs to go for an immediate ceiling challenge because you're not going to save a reset. But he just missed it. Very difficult um, shot to save there. Daniel saw the early challenge coming in, played the shot as quickly as he could. And, you know, I'd, I'd say well played by both players in that exchange. Dries just a bit too tough, and he might be getting a bit tilted here. Kickoffs are getting way too much in Daniel's favor. And that's two ceiling challenges in a row that have gone wrong. My goodness, Daniel's pretty good at adapting to these challenges, though. How many times have we seen ceiling challenges crushing it recently? Um, when somebody's reluctant to move the ball early, but Daniel, as soon as he sees Dries flying up that back wall, he is right away getting the ball moving to put it past him. Is Dries as young as Daniel? Yeah, well, not quite as young, but they're both 14 right now. Daniel's going to be 15 in December at the end of this year. Dries is going to be 15 next month, so. Be on the lookout for this guy. I wouldn't be surprised to see a team or, you know, himself uh, ending up in an RLCSX event coming soon. Now Daniel just managed to salvage that kickoff. Look at the power shot. So Daniel just does not give up on any of these. Salvage the kickoff. Has one boost pad to work with. Not a problem. Just a good old-fashioned uh, ball chase on the kickoff. And he's up 6-1. Devastating performance from Daniel. He's matched Dries mechanically, and he's just been more clutch all day today. And now it's up to Dries to make a series out of this. If he can come back and win this, I'll be incredibly impressed. Like I said earlier, they've got the mechanics. They've clearly got the, uh, the 1v1 IQ. But do they have the uh, mental game on lockdown? Threes, tries for the bump. Daniel somehow avoids the bump there and ends up making the save quite easily, actually. Oh my goodness, Daniel with a huge flick. Actually, far too huge as he sends it into the bar. It looks like uh, Dries is going to get at least a little bit of help from him as he tries to keep the comeback going. Still plenty of time here. Dries has got to just stay calm control the ball when he gets it and keep the pressure on Daniel when Daniel has put, uh, possession it's a decent fake by Dries but Daniel is just too uh, well spaced right now he is not backing off and he's not falling for uh, Dries tricks trying to get him to back off no reset for Daniel much to uh, Dries delight there uh, yeah, I've got a sneaky suspicion he's going to get one here. There it is. Now Dries successfully defends it for the first time in a while. Almost forced Daniel to own goal, actually, by uh, fading away from that 50-50. And now Daniel just sends another pile driver on there. It's 7-3.
And this game has just been a clinic from Daniel in how to send the ball quickly towards your opponent's net. How many times have we seen him do this? <laughs> he just absolutely slams it. It's pretty much, uh, you know, the first killer effect right there. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, all these, uh, you know, really young up-and-coming Rocket League players, they hit the ball so hard. It is absolutely ridiculous. And you can, you can understand Dree's frustration here. He needs the comeback. He needs the possession to get that comeback. And he's, he's lost two kickoffs in a row there. Um, so he's, you know, tried to get in Daniel's face as quickly as he can to at least give himself a chance to come back here. Big dunk by Dries. Daniel, too strong. And that's going to be another one. Flying into Dries net, 9-3. Daniel, just too good. I mean, I think overall, Dries was better in game one. His consistent offensive pressure once he stopped overextending was too good um, for Daniel to shadow defend. But when Daniel started to challenge early more often, when he started to mix up his kickoff a bit more and not end up in these really boost-starved situations as much, I think the game kind of leveled out. That's when it became even. And then in this last game, we've seen that when Daniel gets in front, the pressure that he's able to exert um, is just far too much for Dries to handle. So, you know, it, it really was just a game where every single game Daniel got better. Dries just kind of stayed at the same level throughout. He didn't have the levels that Daniel had today to, you know, adapt and to keep on, uh, you know, keep Daniel guessing, I should say. But yeah, well played to Daniel. Definitely a great series for Dries um, if we take all of the individual moments. But, um, yeah, there's one or two moments in this one that he'd probably rather forget about. Most notably, the zero-second equalizer in game one. That was Dries' game. He threw it. Um, and when, you know, when you lose that one in such a tilting fashion, it is hard to come back. Um, it's very, very hard to come back, especially when you've not been there before too many times. I mean, these guys are both really, really good. They don't end up in these losing positions very often. So you, 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 you just got to learn from it when it happens. Um... Uh, yeah, great showing by these two. Like I said, two of the absolute best in North America right now. Um, you know, just just absolute best full stop. They, they are just up there with the absolute best in NA. And yeah, they've, they've got bright futures ahead of them if they keep grinding. Bright futures ahead of them. They'll be old enough to compete. Well, I mean, Dries is literally going to be old enough to compete in, the, in Rock League competition in like three weeks. <laughs> so he's probably not going to uh, feel too... It won't feel too distant for him. But I remember, you know, when you're 14... A year feels like a long time. Daniel's probably thinking, man, I've got to wait till December to play competitive RL. Are you joking me? And nah, that's, that's not a long time. Uh, yeah, he's, he's going to definitely find his way into into some in a, into a high-level RLCS team, if I was to guess. Wouldn't be surprised if both these guys do. Yeah, I reckon Daniel's got this. It's going to be tough, right? They've messed up the kickoff spawns here. There we go. They did it. So they just had to keep leaving and joining until they ended up on opposite sides of the ball. Well played to them. What do you guys think? Can we get a pre Okay, we, we've got a prediction here. Uh, does the winner of game two score more than eight goals? Interesting. I like that one. That is a great prediction contest. Now Daniel almost faked out Dries there. Harsh cut in field. Oh dear, what's happening to Daniel on that play though? Dries has time to take a first touch. I think he might have overhit this though. He's going to go for it, but he does not hit that very well. Dries has got to calm down here. Multiple poor touches, and now Daniel with a heroic save. Just to remind him that it's not all going to be easy for Dries. Not going to be Dreesy, I should say. Yeah, Dries has just got to remember he's made big comeback wins in recent. Um, one beyond matches. Daniel swept him last time they played on my channel, but not last time they played in competition. Dries beat him, and he went on to win the tournament they were playing in. So, if anything, Dries is the more informed player competitively, but um, show match kind of setting has proven time and time again to be a different kind of vibe to uh, 1v1 tournaments. Half star, thanks for 29 month tier one. Same as Rock, thanks for 1,000 bits again. Uh, he's cheering all for Dries here. Sorry about the end of that game. I'm sure you must have been pretty happy going right up until zero seconds. Oh, well done with 
the shot from Daniel. He chases Dries away from the corner boost as well. If you're wondering why Dries didn't just go for the corner boost there, it's because if he did, he wouldn't have a car. Uh, Daniel would have demoed it. Daniel is really just cleaning up right now. 2-0. Lovely touch in this corner. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, he just barely got the ball past Dries. And he managed to get his car passed unscathed as well. So Agneti, thanks for the brand new prime. Welcome to the channel. Dries going to get his first goal of game two. And that was much needed. He really just needs to start keeping ball control again. Because when he got control of the ball in that first game, and he just started to pepper shots at Daniel's net, Dries looked like he had an edge in the matchup. But um, he just didn't clutch it out. He choked the end of the game. And now we're back into Daniel. Full control. Lovely flick by Daniel. Puts the reset shot behind Dries, who expected a far post flick. And I think that, yeah, Daniel's even double touched that one in as well. Element of a dunk on it. Also, it's all going Daniel's way right now. 3 1. Still yet to lose a game to Dries on my channel. I mean, you can tell just by watching these guys play, they're, they're absolutely at that level already in terms of mechanical ability. Um, even in terms of consistency. The only thing that they lack is, of course, that competitive experience, but they're, they're absolutely right there with the best in North America, these two. Extremely high-level stuff right here. That was a really good save attempt. We have to see this again from Daniel's POV. Oh, that was a really good try. Dries did brilliantly to cover uh, the entire ball as well as he did and now he's starting to read Daniel's fake kickoff this isn't one of Daniel's better fake kickoffs so I must say yeah he flipped way too early there see when you see your opponent dodge as early as Daniel did in that play um, you already know they're not going to go for the ball see, if you're going to dodge like this you won't reach the ball in time yeah Dries knew something was up Daniel's done that a few times today and he, he could read the timing of it being off and now he's up 4-3 Threes just knew that he had the boost advantage, makes it work. 4-3 now, so he's still, you know, had control in both games. Is he going to get anything from them? Pre-flip attempted by Drees. He's going to dance around Daniel. This is just ridiculous. Ball control by Drees. 5-3 now. Daniel did not expect that one. Just when you think Drees is going to go to midfield for a boost advantage. No, he cuts back and goes for straight for your goal. It's a great little streak here for Dries. Can he make it six? Yes, he will. Daniel needs a kickoff transplant. It's not going well for him. Every single kickoff is going heavily in the favor of Dries. Does Daniel have maybe a wave dash recovery kickoff under his, uh, or in his back pocket somewhere? Doesn't look like it. I don't see many of those in uh, NA, got to say. Apparently Jack's doing his best to popularize them on the EU server. I really do think it's one of the most unexplored kickoff strategies at the very highest level of ones. Lovely recovery by Dries. Stays safe from the demo. And keeps up ball pressure, but he's conceded the possession. Now Daniel looks for the demo, gets it, but he's hit the ball into the bar. Well, getting one last touch on it. Still, strong position for Daniel. Pretty good save by Dries, though. He's trying to just lunge forward. And I think he's full Daniel here. I don't know if that was fully intended by Dries to just fly past the ball. Um, and also miss a demo entirely, but it worked pretty well because there's no way Daniel saw that coming. Perfect timing on the challenge by Dries. No wave dash for Daniel to accelerate the ball on target. And you know, Dries is right back to his full, fully confident self. He started off this game with a couple of wayward touches, but this is more like it from him. Now Daniel's sick of defending in his net, he uh, decides to up the aggression and challenge first time in the midfield. That's really good adaptation by Daniel. He's been backing off a bit too much, I would say. He's been retreating too often, giving Dries too much space to work with. Daniel fakes the challenge with the wave dash, plays for the boost instead. Bit of a scary situation though for him. Dries didn't get a ton of power on the shot. It could have been dangerous. Daniel air dribbles into the ceiling. One last touch to try and go around Dries as the ball was about to land. Dries does not allow it. A lot of heavy shots being attempted here by Dries, but he's mishitting them. Uh, that's two in a row now that he's just slightly mishit. A lot of power missing from these shots. 
I believe he's dodging just a tiny bit too late, but I could be wrong. I, you know, I might not be seeing exactly what's happening here uh, because we are spectating from EU. Lovely recovery by Daniel. He's within a goal. Therese needs to be up uh, careful to the utmost right now. And now Daniel's figured out the kickoff. And that's a very good shot. It's just in. Daniel ties it. Is it another nightmare scenario for Dries? It was a zero second equalizer in the last game. He's got 48 seconds to work with this time. Now, if Dries loses this game, I really just don't see a comeback happening. It's going to be too much for him. I don't think he's confident in the matchup in a show match setting. Overall, he's had, you know, spurts in this uh, series where he's looked great. And he's also falling apart on occasion. Now, why is Dries not to go for this? Daniel was right behind that. But look at Daniel's boost efficiency. He's still going, still air dribbling. And now, that's just as I say that, he has run out of boost. Gives up the possession to Dries. Thinks about the immediate wall shot. Bit scared to do it. With such little time left in the clock. Now here comes Dries for the demo. Just misses it. Dangerous play by Daniel in the back corner. You can see those heavy hits. So keeping Dries under pressure. Daniel into the air with hardly any time left in the game. He's got the reset. Dries blocks the shot. And he doesn't bother keeping the ball up on zero. He's still got probably flashbacks of keeping the ball up on zero seconds in the last game. Or Daniel doing it, I should say. Oh dear, though. Dries in a horrible position. Daniel's done him again. And for the second game in a row, Daniel takes down Dries immediately in overtime. Solid adaptation by Daniel. He was getting crushed in kickoffs in this game. I think Dries went from 3-1 down to 6-3 uh, ahead. But like literally five goals in a row. And then Daniel managed to turn that around put four in a row past Dries. So he's just been the more clutch player here. There really isn't a lot between them. In fact, I'd say they're pretty much inseparable when it comes to skill right now. Uh, but the only identifiable difference is that Daniel has been clutch. Dries has not. He has, you know, Dries choked his zero second play. Daniel's nailed every single one of his. Same as Rock, you fair weather fan, cheering a thousand bits for Daniel now. How could you? Hey, Fair J, thanks for 49 month year one. How are the, uh, how's the interview edit going? Og Morbis, thanks for the seven month prime and also Egg Static, thanks for the two month year one. Michael D. Noise, thanks for the brand new prime and also Egg Static, thanks for gifting three subs. Welcome to all the new subs. And uh, I, Rusty RL, thanks for the uh, brand new tier one. Welcome to the channel, mate. I reckon we're looking at another, another sweep here, guys. As much as I'd love to see a close series today. Daniel's just too clutch. I don't know what it is. Dries just can't play a consistent end game against him. It's the heavy hits really piling on the pressure early on again. There is a wave dash kickoff. Beautiful technique there by Daniel. Just uh, getting to the ball a little bit faster. I don't, I'd love to see more of this from, from uh, NA1s. Yeah, it's such a good mix-up, especially if you're losing kickoffs. Yes, true, Fair Jim. True. Fair Jim currently editing the Arsenal uh, interview. For those of you who are wondering, would you ever consider bringing TikTok creators into show matches? Are there any like TikTok creators who are like bigger than, or who are big on TikTok but nothing else? Any like high-level players who are only big on TikTok? I'm not aware of any actually. Perfect challenge by Daniel. Straight behind the ball. And Dries. Not having an easy time setting up multiple shots in a row here, just like he did before. Or like he did it mainly in that game one comeback. He was really starting to, um, to control the possession for long periods of time. But Daniel's mixed up his challenge game. Um, he's, you know, mixed up the kickoff game very well. Overall, just made the necessary adaptations to take control away from Dries, and that's just too good. Daniel, 3 0, and you don't save those. Dries did a little bit of freestyle setup for the defense, but with no ball pressure, you're not going to save that kind of flip reset quality from Daniel. I mean, you need a wild pre jump to save this. And the last time that Dries got ahead of himself in his own net trying to save a reset shot, Daniel doubled it off the near post. This is a lot better from Dries, but he's still been outplayed. 
This is honestly the best strat the Drees can go for here. He needs to go for an immediate ceiling challenge because you're not going to save a reset. But he just missed it. Very difficult um, shot to save there. Daniel saw the early challenge coming in, played the shot as quickly as he could. And, you know, I'd, I'd say well played by both players in that exchange. Drees just a bit too tough and he might be getting a bit tilted here. Kickoffs are getting way too much in Daniel's favor. And that's two ceiling challenges in a row that have gone wrong. My goodness, Daniel's pretty good at adapting to these challenges, though. How many times have we seen ceiling challenges crushing it recently? Um, when somebody's reluctant to move the ball early, but Daniel, as soon as he sees Dries flying up that back wall, he is right away getting the ball moving to put it past him. Is Dries as young as Daniel? Yeah, well, not quite as young, but they're both 14 right now. Daniel's going to be 15 in December at the end of this year. Dries is going to be 15 next month, so be on the lookout for this guy. I wouldn't be surprised to see a team or, you know, himself uh, ending up in an RLCSX event coming soon. Now Daniel just managed to salvage that kickoff. Look at the power shot. So Daniel just does not give up on any of these. Salvage the kickoff. Has one boost pad to work with. Not a problem. Just a good old-fashioned... Uh, ball chase on the kickoff and he's up 6-1 devastating performance from Daniel he's matched Drees mechanically and he's just been more clutch all day today and now it's up to Drees to make a series out of this if he can come back and win this I'll be incredibly impressed like I said earlier they've got the mechanics they've clearly got the, uh, the 1v1 IQ but do they have the uh, mental game on lockdown. Drees tries for the bump. Daniel somehow avoids the bump there and ends up making the save quite easily, actually. Oh my goodness, Daniel with a huge flick. Actually, far too huge as he sends it into the bar. It looks like uh, Drees is going to get at least a little bit of help from him as he tries to keep the comeback going. Still plenty of time here. Drees has got to just stay calm, control the ball when he gets it, and keep the pressure on Daniel when Daniel has put, uh, possession. It's a decent fake by Drees, but Daniel is just too uh, well spaced right now. He is not backing off, and he's not falling for uh, Drees' tricks trying to get him to back off. No reset for Daniel. Much to uh, Drees' delight there. Uh, yeah, I've got a sneaky suspicion he's going to get one here. There it is. Now, Drees successfully defends it for the first time in a while. Almost forced Daniel to own goal, actually, by uh, fading away from that 50-50. And now Daniel just sends another pile driver on there. It's 7-3. And this game has just been a clinic from Daniel in how to send the ball quickly towards your opponent's net. How many times have we seen him do this? <laughs> he just absolutely slams it. It's pretty much, uh, you know, the first killer effect right there. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, all these, uh, you know, really young up-and-coming Rocket League players, they hit the ball so hard. It is absolutely ridiculous. And you can, you can understand Dree's frustration here. He needs the comeback. He needs the possession to get that comeback. And he's, he's lost two kickoffs in a row there. Um, so he's, you know, tried to get in Daniel's face as quickly as he can to at least give himself a chance to come back here. Big dunk by Drees. Daniel, too strong. And that's going to be another one. Flying into Drees net, 9-3. Daniel, just too good. I mean, I think overall, Drees was better in game one. His consistent offensive pressure, once he stopped overextending, was too good um, for Daniel to shadow defend. But when Daniel started to challenge early more often when he started to mix up his kickoff a bit more and not end up in these really boost starved situations as much I think the game kind of leveled out that's when it became even and then in this last game we've seen that when Daniel gets in front the pressure that he's able to exert um, is just far too much for Drees to handle so you know it, it really was just a game where every single game Daniel got better Drees just kind of stayed at the same level throughout he didn't have the levels that Daniel had today to, you know, adapt and to keep on, uh, 
you know, keep Daniel guessing, I should say. But yeah, well played to Daniel. Definitely a great series for Drees um, if we take all of the individual moments. But um, yeah, there's one or two moments in this one that he'd probably rather forget about. Most notably, the zero second equalizer in game one. That was Drees' game. He threw it. Um, and when you know when you lose that one in such a tilting fashion, it is hard to come back. Um, it's very, very hard to come back, especially when you've not been there before too many times. I mean, these guys are both really, really good. They don't end up in these losing positions very often. So you, 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 you just got to learn from it when it happens. Um, yeah, great showing by these two. Like I said, two of the absolute best in North America right now. Um, you know, just just absolute best full stop. They, they are just up there with the absolute best in NA.